What's up everyone? Welcome to another episode of Power Platform TV. Today we're going to take a look at using the Fluent UI details list. So this is a control that comes with the creator kit and I have a blog post about the creator kit, uh, getting started with the creator kit. This is the URL here. I'll put it down in the description as well. Uh, but basically you can go ahead and check out this link, install the creator kit, and it's going to give you a whole bunch of controls that you can use in your Power Apps. So the kit was created by Microsoft's Power Cat team and some of the uh, community members as well. And it's just a really cool way to just get up and running really quickly. So once you have the Creator Kit installed, uh, what we'll do is we're gonna basically show how to use one of the controls in that kit, and that is the details list. So basically, you could see here in this screenshot at the bottom, basically a list that is, uh, great for displaying data in a grid, okay? And in this example, what we're gonna do is we'll basically go through uh, adding a button to a model-driven app, and then when the button is clicked by a user, it's going to open up this custom page, and that's where we'll have this Fluent UI details list appearing, and it's gonna basically appear in the side pane of a model-driven app, and it's gonna be contextual. So uh, when a user is actually on an account record, will display, will pass through the account, and then we'll display the related contacts for that account inside of this grid. So that's what we're gonna do. Uh, this is the URL. If I just scroll up a little bit, uh, this is uh, it's a URL on my blog. This is what we're gonna go through. Let's jump right into it. So I'm going to add this to the Sales Hub app. So if you go over to uh, the make.powerapps.com portal, and here is the Sales Hub app, and it, you know, you can, Put this wherever you want um, in any model driven app but basically this is where I'm going to do it just for simplicity uh, so I'm going to go ahead and click edit here and this is the way that I'm going to add my custom page you could also create a solution and add it that way that's probably the better way to do it but I'm just going to do it this way uh, again to just make things simple so here is uh, add page so I'm just going to click on add page here and then I have the types here I'm going to select custom and I'm going to click next and I did some videos on uh, just really simple custom pages, how to make them in the past. So you could go and check those out as well. But uh, here is where we create a new custom page. And this is where we provide a name. And I'm going to call this one account customers like that. All right. So we'll go ahead and click add. And this is taking us over to the canvas designer. What I'm going to do now is add some data. So I'm going to go over here to the data icon, click add data. And here I'm going to select contacts. Okay, so that's going to bring uh, contacts dataverse table into this uh, custom page. And now this is where we'll go ahead and add the Fluent UI grid. So I'm going to click over here and this is, uh, we don't see it yet. So down here in the bottom left, get more components. I'm going to click on that. And then this is where we are able to select the components. We have the code tab here. So I'm just going to select the code tab. And then this is going to show all of the code components that are available. And if you don't see the code tab here, what you'll need to do is go out to the Power Platform Admin Center for this organization and turn on uh, code components. And uh, I have a blog post about that as well that's on my blog. I'll also put that in the link below. So you'll see the code uh, tab here. And then there's all these great uh, controls that we can utilize. And if I just search here for details, this is the one that we're going to use, uh, the Fluent Details List. All right. So that's the one. I'm going to go ahead and click import here down at the bottom. And now here on the left, we can see the code components has appeared. And then here is the control. Okay. So now let's just simply drag this onto the canvas. And we're going to select contacts as the data source here. And let's just go and drag this up to the top left here. And we could see here uh, next to fields. If we click edit on fields, these are the three fields that are selected and we can of course go ahead and add more fields. So if I select add field here, it gives me a list of all the fields in the contacts data source. So I'm going to go ahead and add the country field as well. And that's going to be this one here, address one country region. And then I'll go ahead and click add. So now I have these four fields from the contact. And then what we can do is we can just go ahead and enlarge this uh, grid as well. I'm just going to make it the size of the, uh, the canvas here. So now what you'll see is there's actually no data being displayed, right? You'd kind of expect there to be a little bit of a preview of the data. So there's nothing in here. So what we got to do is we need to go and head over to the advanced tab 
and we see all these fields here. And if we scroll down, we need to find the column items uh, section here, field. So if we scroll down a little bit more, we see it here, here it is here, column underscore items, all right? So there's nothing in here at the moment. So we, we're gonna go and populate this and then we're gonna see the data appear here on the canvas. So if we pop back over to my uh, blog here, I actually have a little sample. So I'm just gonna scroll down here and copy that and then we'll talk more about it. So here it is here. So I'm gonna grab this table here, copy this, and then we'll go back over to our canvas designer and right here, I'm just gonna control V and paste that in. And we can see here that we actually have a record coming up now. So if we go back over to the blog, we'll just take a look at what we have. So we basically have the fields that we wanna display in the list. So we have the, the full name here and you can see with each field, we have some properties that we can set as well. So here I'm actually setting the column width uh, whether it's sortable or not, is it bold, is it resizable? And so we're getting the name, we're getting the telephone, email address one, and we're getting the country as well. And the country is kind of an interesting one because you can see here we're setting this as the column cell type as tag, okay? And so if you go over to the creator kit, you can actually see more details about uh, these specific attributes. So this is the uh, creator kit reference app and basically here, if you go down to details list, this is the control that we're using. And it's really cool because it gives you all these best practices here. And uh, if you scroll down a little bit, you'll actually see the uh, examples of some of these lists in use. And so, you know, this is a, a cool example here where you, we have icons and we have a nice little layout. If I keep scrolling down, we have, uh, this one's kind of interesting, and this is this is where we're using the cell types. So we could see here, this is like a tag column here. So this is the type here. You can see it just has a little uh, border around it, and uh, you can style it with different colors and things. And and basically, you know, you click here on the code uh, tab, and then you can see more details here. And this is basically where you can see how this is formed. And this table here is. Uh, an example of what we've copied into our column items attribute. Okay, so that's where you can you can kind of make make use of the creator kit as well. So I'm going to hop back over now to the canvas and we'll keep going. So now that we have that that populated, let's go head back over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click back on the properties tab here. Let's go open the model driven app and we can actually see what this looks like in terms of the data. And then I'm just gonna head back over to apps and we're just gonna play the Sales Hub app from here. And then we can see uh, basically what data we're looking at. So if I go ahead and click on accounts and let's say we select the uh, My Coffee Lab here. So you could see that this, this uh, account does not have any contacts. So what I'm gonna do, let's go ahead and create a couple of contacts and then we'll be able to see some more data coming through into our app. And then th this is gonna make a little bit more sense so I'm gonna create a contact here called Bob Smith and let's go ahead and we'll do save and create new. So this is gonna be against this particular account, Coffee Lab. And so we have one contact there and then I'm gonna do, gonna do Jim Smith, okay? And click save and close. Very creative with these names. And it's saying there's a duplicate, but I'm gonna ignore and save because that's not a duplicate. And so now we have two contacts here against this uh, coffee lab. And then in total, I'm gonna see three contacts here for myself, okay? So that'll make this uh, scenario appear a little more realistic. So now if I head back over to the canvas, I'm just gonna go ahead and save this where we are and then we can play it. So it's uh, save as account customers, that's great. Let's hit save. And we're not doing any filtering at this point. We're just basically trying to display everything, right? So if I hit play here, we still have the one contact. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click okay here and let's just refresh this page. And then I'm gonna click reload here and then we'll get the latest two contacts that we created appearing as well. And we can see here now that we have the three contacts appearing, right? So that's pretty cool. I'm just gonna make this a little bit bigger so we can see it a little more clearly. And you can see as well, this is the tag coming through, right? 
So you can see the, the country has a little border around it. So this is just a simple example of how you can play with these different attributes for the fields that you're displaying in the list. So if I click back into the uh, control here, we can see that the items are being populated by the contacts, right? So that's the most super straightforward scenario. Now let's say, uh, what we'll do is let's kind of deviate a little bit and I wanna show how easy it is to add a search box to this control here, okay? So if I just bring this down a little and let's go ahead and add a text box. So I'm just gonna go throw that onto the page here. And so there's our text box. And I'm gonna go ahead and just get rid of this value here. And let's say um, we wanted to wire these two controls up together. I'm gonna go back to my blog and actually have a little piece of code here. So I'm gonna go and grab this. Let's go copy this. And we're going to go back to our uh, Fluent Grid and the way that the items is gonna be populated now is through this, okay? So if we just make this a little bigger here, what we're saying is we're gonna sort by columns and then we're gonna search uh, contacts based on the text box one's value of full name and we're, and we're gonna display ascending, right? So let's try this out and see, what it, see if it works or not. I'm gonna go minimize this. Let's go and play this. And so if I start to type in here at the top, so if I type Bob, we could see that it's filtered Bob, right? So these two controls are actually linked together now. It, and it's so simple, right? If I type in Smith, it's automatically filtering the Fluent uh, UI details list based on that name there, right? And it's so fast as well, right? You know, as I'm typing, it's straight away filtering. So there wasn't really a lot of work to get that to, to, to happen, right? Really cool. Um, so, so that, I just wanted to kind of show you guys how that worked just as something else to throw in there, but I'm going to go and delete this, uh, this search. We won't use it on the, um, on what we're going to do. So let's get back to the starting point of where we were. And because in our example, what I want to do is we'll open this up contextually where we'll pass in the account ID. We'll add, and then basically when you, a user clicks an account, it's gonna display only the contacts for that account, right? So let's go and make this uh, bigger again. And let's hop back over to my blog here and I'm gonna go grab some more code. So this code here, we're gonna copy this, head back over to the app. And then if I go back over here to the app here, and we're gonna do the on start. So when, the, when this custom page starts, right, this is what I want it to do. And we'll just make this a little bigger so we can see what's happening. So we're basically saying uh, we want to set a variable called var account and we want to set that and we're going to look up, uh, basically we're passing in. So from our custom page, uh, from, from our model driven app, we're going to pass in the record ID of the account, okay? So we'll get to that, but that's basically going to be passed in from the button that we put on the account, okay? So this is the parameter that's coming in, and then we can read that in the custom page through param. So that's how we access that parameter that's getting passed in from the model-driven app to the custom page. And we're basically saying that that's a GUID, and we are going to look up that ID in the accounts table, and we're going to set it to this variable var account, and then we'll be able to use var account later when we filter this grid. That's the next step. And you can see here it's saying accounts isn't recognized. And so I'm just going to go over to data here and let's add data, let's add accounts, and then we'll get that account appearing there. And this all, this red goes away, right? So we're now ready for the next step. Let's head back over to the blog. Let's scroll down and we could see here, this is the, Next one we want the filtering of the subgrid, of the grid, sorry, the list. So if I head back here, I'm gonna click on the list. And now instead of contacts, this is where we paste this in. So now what we're doing is we're saying, we're gonna filter in the, uh, from the contacts, we have the, here's our var account, okay? So that on start variable that we set, and we wanna get the account, and we're going to set that based here on the account company name. Okay, so this is the, the field basically in the, in the list 
So we're basically, this is how we wire this together. Okay, so it knows the, the account that we're passing in, we only wanna display contacts that have that account. Okay, so this is just a very super simple example. Uh, so now I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. And then once the save's done, let's go publish this. There it is, we'll click dismiss, let's publish. And we'll publish this version. Okay, so now we're back on the model driven app and we can see the ID of the custom page here. Uh, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna copy this out and we'll save this off to the side. And we're gonna use that in our JavaScript uh, pretty soon. So we'll see, we'll see how that's used, but it's kind of nice having it there because you know you could grab it from the solution, from the default solution, but uh, we have it here anyway, it's off to the side, ready to go. So the next thing we're gonna do is add our button to the menu. So we'll edit the command bar for the account. And here we're gonna select the main form. We'll click edit. And at this point we can go ahead and add a new command. And I did some PowerFX uh, ones in previous videos. This time we're gonna select JavaScript, uh, but go check out my PowerFX buttons in, in other videos on my channel. I'm gonna go and click continue here. And this has created the button. Uh, now I'm gonna name the button. So we'll just call this open account contacts. And for the icon, we can select an icon. Doesn't really matter which one. I'm just gonna do this uh, the plus sign. And here we want to do run JavaScript, okay? So now we need to upload a library. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to create a new web resource. And here we can upload a file uh, with our JavaScript that's going to open our custom page, okay? So this is the JavaScript here. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go ahead and paste in the custom page ID that I had copied previously. Great, so that's in there. And then uh, basically the rest of this is gonna basically do a navigate to to open the custom page, right? So we're passing in the ID, it's grabbing the ID from the record ID. Uh, it's, set, it's sending that to the custom page as the record ID parameter and uh, basically opening this in the side pane. Okay, so this is all the code you need really. All right, so I've selected that web resource, JavaScript file. Uh, I'm going to give it an, this a name here. Let's just call it account, open account contact.js. And we'll do the same for the name. And that all looks good. We're going to save and publish. And now if we search for open, we'll find our open account contacts. There it is. Let's click add. And so that's wired up now. Uh, what's the function we want to call? Let's go back to our script here. We'll copy the function name. So this is the one that will we'll be executed when the button's pressed. And then finally, we want to add this parameter. And this is where we're going to pass in the primary control. Okay, so that's going to tell us which account record we have actually, uh, the user has actually selected so that we know to filter on that record. So now we're all set. Let's go save and publish. And that's basically it. Let's go ahead and play this and uh, let's see this in action. And we can see there's a new version of the app available. So let's go ahead and just hit refresh, make sure we get the latest. Okay, so now we see the button here. We're gonna click open account contacts. And then we see here the uh, records here opening in the custom page in the right side pane, okay? So these are the uh, filtered records. They're only the two contacts for this account. Uh, it's not showing any other contacts, and that's because we're passing in the account ID through the record ID parameter, which is picked up by the uh, custom page, and it filters out the Fluent UI details grid and is able to display this here. Really cool feature. Hope you guys enjoyed. So that's it, guys. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and of course, check out my blog at carldesouza.com. Thank you.